Hello, this is Bernard Rieke and Rose Rohani. So we, in this video we'd like to give an overview of our VR sickness benchmark system that we developed. Here on the website you can find a lot more information including a talk from Rose on it, some stimulus videos and papers on it and we'll keep adding to this. Regarding the code that we'd like to cover today, uh, it will be all on GitHub. And with that, I'll hand it over to Rose, who actually developed the program and should get all the credit for this. Um, yes, so once you download the project from GitHub and you open it on Unity, this should be the first scene that you see once you open the project on Unity. So there are a few important things that I would like to review over here that will come in handy as a researcher. So the first thing that you notice over here is that there are a bunch of fo um, folders in the Ask section and the two main ones that you would need are the small and large environment which are the main focus of our paper as well. So if you go to the scene folder, um, there are a few over here, this one is for testing, this one just was again a test, the two main ones are the large environment and the small environment and when you open the project by default it should be on one of these settings. So right now I'm on the small environment. If we go to the large environment, um, it should open it up. Very similar, it almost mirrors the small environment. Even as you can see over here, the hierarchy is almost identical in both the environments. So anything that I will review over here will cover both these environments and I'll only go over the large environment. So just a quick recap. So the idea here is to create a roller coaster like uh, environment which was designed to really induce uh, sickness very quickly, but also have sickness subside very quickly. So we have these repetitive fi figure eight motions. Mm -hmm. Yes, and as you can see, this figure eight, you can see it from uh, the top here. This is the large environment figure eight. Same for the small environment. Um, if we zoom in a bit, you can see a smaller figure eight over here. So going back to the large environment, uh, there are a few objects over here. Um, some of them just have to do with creating the path, the light, the sun, and so on, details that I don't think you would need to worry about. Uh, what I do want to focus over here is the settings object, which is very important on the inspector on the right side. There is a bunch of information that could come in handy for you. So specifically, this nausea score script that we have over here is um, responsible for writing down all this information that you need on your file which will be eventually exported into a csv that you can have in the end of your project once you run a trial um, as well as any added motion sickness reduction technique on top of your project so i'll just go over it one by one um, again this is going to be the script that will be exported for you at the end of your project so over here, you can set the environment size. By default, the large environment is set to L, smaller to S. You can change it if you want, however way you want. Um, motion sickness reduction method, if you decide to add one on top of it, you can just write down whatever it is that you want over here. For example, we can write to the view reduction. Uh, condition really is just up to you. If you add, want to add any extra information on top of your um, trial, you can add it over here. For now, it's empty. So th these are basically just labels that will be put in the output parameter file, but don't directly affect the code, is that right? Yes, these mm -hmm. will only be on the output, output file, and I'll show you an example of how that will look like once I'm done reviewing this, mm -hmm. but it does not affect the project or the code in any way. Um, so these are a few uh, predetermined sickness methods that we've already included as a part of this project and as part of our paper as well. So if we turn on the vignette, this is where the field of view reduction will be added on top of the field of view of the headset. Um, by default, this is set to 20. Um, it's not, it does not reflect the actual um, field of view degrees that you would see in a real headset. You would have to just play around with it, put on your headset, use the slider to see what makes sense for you. And is that the static or the dynamic field of view reduction? Uh, this is the static. Uh, field of view reduction. Mm -hmm. If you want to make a dynamic field of view reduction, you would have to turn on auto field of view. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then we have uh, the dynamic blur, which essentially just blurs the environment based on the translational speed. Um, you can turn that on, and then the virtual nose, which sets a nose in front of the user's point of view, and you can even set a nose color if you would like. Um, these, you don't need to worry about it, you can just leave them untouched. 
um, if you decide to change the threshold, so the um, threshold meaning the sickness percentage in which the um, study will stop as soon as the participant reaches that level of sickness, you can change it over here. So for our study, and by default, it's said by 50%. So if the participant reaches a sickness score of 50 out of 100%, the movement will stop, and you can change that over here. Um, everything else over here, you can leave it untouched. These are just some assigned objects from the left side. Um, and then everything else again here, it's just a US format. And if you want to see your output file, um, we will just go to app data over here. Go folder up. And once you go through a trial, this is where all the information, this, th these are the three files that will be created for each file. So if I open the first one, summary data, for example, which is, um, or maybe even the sensory data. Sensory data is the one with the most complete information. If that opens up, you can see all this information that I explained and even more in one data file. And that one basically has just one uh, line per time, basically, running at full frame rate. Yes, yes. And the summary data file is basically one line per trial? Yes. So, so more no compact see. for statistics mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Yes, so if you want to sort of like maybe stack all of them together, all the trials for all the participants in one file, more compact, maybe the summary data makes more sense because it's just one line. But sensory data gives you all the information frame by frame uh, from the moment you start press play on um, the on Unity till the very end until you stop it. It's frame by frame all the information from the participant um, ID to the trial environment size and so on. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, they're meant to be concatenated if you want to have one massive data file. Yes. It includes participant and all the information needed. Exactly, yeah. So these are the two main files that you would get out of this. Um, and then another thing that I would want to review is this player um, object over here. This is another thing that you would need to be aware of. So set manually, turning it on and off will set the benchmark condition from passive to active. Um, that is important. And um, I'm just looking through this. Um, you could look through this while you're running the project to see updated information on the meters traveled, seconds traveled, and so on, although all of this will end up going to your output file as well. Um, and I think that is it. So it. set manually, if it's set manually, then it's uh, active condition, so manual, and if it's uh, not manual, then it's basically automatically on rails, so it's passive locomotion. Yes, right? exactly, mm -hmm. yes. And then the paper used passive locomotion because it higher controllability, but uh, yeah, we will have an active condition. Really mm -hmm. soon. Yes, so this is on the updated version where we have the active condition added on top of it. Mm -hmm. For the paper, it's passive. Um, one last thing that I want to review before you set up your study is that in the same folder that you are getting all your data files, you can scroll down. Um, you can create a text file car called participant underline ID, and you can just this is where you would set your participant ID. And unfortunately, it's not on the inspector. We thought that this would be easier, especially if you want to create a build uh, out of this project and if you want to, want to run it for each participant. It's easier to just create this simple text file, put your participant ID over here, and change it each time that you want to start a new participant. And that's the number that goes back to these data files that I just showed you over here. Okay, so meaning you don't have to enter the participant number in Unity, it's just the text file. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is mainly it. Everything else is just set for you. It's ready to go. Um, again, just giving an overview. This is player information, headset information. It's all under here, VR player. This canvas is essentially, if I'm just going to show it to you, this is the interface that you can see, um, which is the sickness, sort of like the um, sickness percentage interface that shows up at each point for the for you to, for the participant to see and to change their sickness score. Um, if you want to play around with that, that's, all that information is here. Uh, but again, to change the threshold, it's all in the settings section. And um, this final thing, if you have a uh, 
HP OmniSep and you want to make use of the eye tracking, the heart rate, all that data that you want to collect, which it already has it, you just need to turn on this object and it, will, and it can do that for you. If not, you can just turn it off and start to go with your own headset. All right, so that's basically the overview of especially the visual interface and we'll follow up with videos for coding and going into individual scripts.